guys, John here with Hook to Hunt. Hey, we're just bringing out a new series for you. We got Chad the Critter Getter. He's going to show us some things about trapping. We don't know a whole lot about trapping, Joe and I personally. However, it's another form of hunting, so Hook to Hunt, everything outdoors. So he's going to show us some of his traps, how he uses his traps, and actually what he uses them for. So we're going to send it over to Chad, and we're going to find some things out. Going to check our beaver sets, but before we started, I wanted to show you a couple of different traps we use, uh, mainly water traps, but you can use them for other things too. There's a little bit of a variation between all the traps and then for each one, like these are our conibears. bears. These are kill traps. This one here is a 110. This is mainly for muskrat. You could use it for rabbit or squirrel if you wanted to. And it's only got one spring. This here's a 160. That's more for uh, coon. People use them for muskrats also. Then we have the big 330s, which we're using, which we're for, using beaver for beaver and all of ours are all set right now. And we got our footholds. This is a Duke number four, four coil. It's a little bigger trap. That's what I use for beaver. I'll use it a little bit for coyotes also. This is a Duke one and a half. This is my muskrat mink. Uh, you can use it for smaller land animals too, possum, coon. Similar to this foothold. Uh, but you got a little different is what we call the long spring. And the reason it's a long spring is because you have a long spring. This one also has a stop loss, which is this spring. So a regular long spring, actually all your footholds, you're gonna have either the, you're gonna have a spring and or a lever. You're gonna have your trigger, which is what the animal you step, steps on to set it off. And then you're gonna have your dog, which is this, which goes into your trigger. And then you've got your jaws, which will hold the animal, or in the conibears, kind of bears, will kill the animal. So on a regular long spring, you squeeze the, squeeze the levers, and it helps if you bend it down. It opens the jaws. Take your dog, flip it over the jaw, and you lock it in. You can see there's a little notch in there. You lock it in to your pan, or your trigger. And on your traps, you're gonna have what they call a loose jaw. And this jaw, if you were setting it for coyote, you want to bet it's solid. So you'd lift this up, pack your dirt around, and then push that down into the dirt. For water trapping, uh, it's not quite as important to be as solid. Um, but if you never need to fire it, what happens, obviously when you set it, you're going to leave that jaw down. The animal comes, steps on this, it disengages the dog, and boom, it'll catch the animal. Okay. With the stop loss, what this does, sets the same way, and the stop loss trigger, or goes under the jaws and when you set this off the stop loss will close the jaws and then it'll push the animal away there's also a spring on the stop loss and that pushes the animal away it keeps them from uh, chewing their leg off because sometimes they'll do that and it'll keep them um, away from the trap and it's a lot harder for them to uh, so as you see if you got your foot caught in there it hits this and it'll push you away so it's harder for them to twist and turn break a leg um, chew their foot off. These footholds, the long spring, and your coil spring traps. Uh, big misconception is people think us trappers are out trying to break bones, cut legs off. Um, these are not sharp at all. The jaws, they're not sharp at all. Okay? And they hold the animal. That's why they're called a foothold. They're made to hold the animal. If you are to break a bone, I've got my hand caught in all these. I've even got my hand caught in this beaver trap. And it's more scary just to hear in the snap of the trap than it is hurting your hand, okay? Um, if these are to break bones, if that's what they were meant for, and it caught an animal by the wrist or the ankle, and it broke that, the only thing holding it would be the skin. And a couple of twist turns, or if they chewed on it, it'd very easily be able to escape. These aren't meant to break bones, and they normally don't. This one and a half here can catch coon. I use it for muskrat. Muskrats have very small bones and every once in a while it'll break a bone, but usually it doesn't. Um, that's not what they're made to do. Um, to set these uh, coil springs, you'll have a, a two coil. Some of the bigger traps have a four coil. Um, what you want to use is the inside of your hand. Push down on the levers. These are the levers. And again, this is the jaw. This is the trigger or the pan. And this is your dog, okay? The, the springs are connected to the levers. And when these levers go down, it compresses the springs. And when it's fired, those springs shoot the levers up. And when it's fired, as you can see, the levers actually lock the jaws shut. 
uh, so they can't open back up. The springs don't do anything for holding power, it's the levers. So you take your inside of your hand, push it here, and I'll show you why the inside of the hand works best here in a second. You push them down, your jaws will loosen up. Then you can use your hands to hold them jaws, okay? Again, you're gonna have a loose jaw. So you pull your pan up, flip your dog over, put it in the notch, okay? And that trap is set. Now, as you can see that, you want your trap pan to be level with your jaws. So you can, I tune all mine, and what tuning is, is just a little bit of filing. You may file the end of this off so it, so it snaps or it fires faster. You're gonna wanna file the end of your dog here so there's not a burr or something that may hang up or allow it to fire quicker. Um, on these coil springs, there's a screw in here that you can use to adjust the tension of your pan so it'll take more foot pounds. Some guys will use that on their coyote traps and make it a little heavier so a coon steps on it, it's less likely to go off and fire. Um, but a bigger animal like a coyote, it'll fire. So this same thing as the long spring, it's got your loose jaw, the animal steps on it, it releases that dog. Oh, I was gonna show you the leveling of the pan. So you can push your pan up if you need to, and if it's too high, you can just push on the dog and it'll make it go down like that. And then it is level, pretty level. With the muskrat traps, these are what I always use the one and a half for. It's not quite as important. It doesn't have to be perfect where you get to your coyotes. Um, that one, it's you gotta finely tune most of your traps. Um, again, animal comes by, steps on the pan, boom, it's caught. I run my pans at zero pounds, they're loose. Uh, there's just enough tension in there so it's not real floppy. The long springs, um, some of them are a lot more floppy. You can adjust that. I don't worry about it much. Four coil, same thing. This takes a little bit more strength to uh, to set. Same thing, use the inside of your hands. Make sure your dog's out of the way because your jaw's going to be sitting there. Push down, it opens it up. Grab that jaw, push down, lift up on the pan, put it in that notch and it's set. You can check that, fairly level. I noticed my levers here need a little tweaking. Um, most traps you buy, you're gonna have to tweak or adjust just a little bit. And what I mean is this loose jaw is set. It doesn't sit flat with this other jaw. It kind of sits up a little bit. So what I do is I'll take a screwdriver or something, stick it in here and twist that and it'll put less pressure on that loose jaw. So it, it can sit down a little bit more. And it looks like actually this one here needs to be twisted just a little bit. So you just pop it in there. For the counter bears, these are your kill traps. These are meant to kill. So these can break bones. Um, this is what, we, what is uh, called a 110. I've modified mine a little bit. I put a short stake on there so I can just go set it, press it in the mud. I'll set this real quick and show you. So if I find a run in a crick, I can go through, set this, push that in, and boom, it's pretty solid. Um, if, if you wanna make it more solid than that, all you take is one stick to hold it there, but it'll sit there, okay? Um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll stick a stick down in here for two reasons. One, so I can spot where it's at, and two, if it does fire, sometimes in that mucky stuff, this'll get loose, and I don't want this to fall out and my animal to drift away and lose a trap and an animal. Okay, um, similarities here, these springs are compressed already. I usually do that to my bigger traps. The 110s, you can do them by hand. These ones you can do by hand, um, but they take a little more oomph and my hand strength is not the greatest. So uh, I try to do that as little as possible. If you're gonna set half a dozen or a dozen of these, or for some people, 30 or 40 of these, your hands are gonna be real tired by the end of the day. Um, this one, you got your springs right here. You got your jaws, and that's what'll snap and catch the animal. This is your trigger, and this is your dog. And the dog goes in this notch, and then when the animal hits this, it releases the dog, fires the jaws, snaps on the animal. Your counter bears, you'll have two or three little slots in here. And that's for your sensitivity. Um, I always set mine widest open, okay? You get the biggest jaw spread and 
they're more than likely going to set it off. Some of these mink guys, they like a hair trigger and they'll set it on the end. It's partially closed, um, but it doesn't take quite as much to fire that, that trigger. Uh, as far as a real quick tuning of these, you can run a round, round file if these need to be deeper. So if it's not fitting all the way on this, you can file that up, square it off. And it sits over, uh, grabs the jaw, that's what holds it on. And then when the trigger is turned, it hits the uh, the dog and it flips it up. So sometimes if, if it's really loose and you barely have it, um, this, the dog may have to travel a lot. So what I do when I get some brand new ones is I set it and then I take a stick and I push and you don't, some of these traps, you got to push them dang near to here before they fire. That's a long ways to travel. So what I'll do is I'll put this in a vise and just tap it down with a hammer. And that'll make it so it's a little hair, little bit more of a hair trigger. It'll fire faster because these little flat spots here in the trigger push up against the dog and set it off. So you want them closer up. Another thing you can do is take your take a small nail and put it in that little gap and pound it down. And it'll make a little bubble, and that will set your dog off faster too. But you, when you set it, you only want this to go just a little ways. You don't want them to be halfway through or all the way through and you come and you find your trap and your trigger's setting like this. It hasn't fired and you don't have an animal. That's a bad day. So you want to tune them up. Um, the 110s here, these don't really hurt. Um, I've got two years ago at trapping convention, I was showing the kids this and the darn thing kept slipping out of my hands. I fired the same trap on my hand three times in a row. Kids thought it was funny. It didn't break any bones. It didn't cut me or anything. You thought that was funny, didn't you, Katie? <laughs> um, these 160s and definitely the 330s, uh, they're a little bit more dangerous. So they all set exactly the same, except on the double springs, you gotta compress both springs. Open it up. Take your dog, flip it over onto your trigger, put that notch, push it down, and I always open it up and keep pressure on this dog, because some of them have a hair trigger. If you don't have that exactly right, it'll fire. You don't want to be right in this area here and right in here is the kill zone. So on the smaller trap, you're just going to get snapped. It might hurt or at least scare you. On the 160, the 220s, the 330s or bigger, um, you're probably going to either break something or it's definitely going to hurt at a bare minimum. So you get it set in there, comes through, boom. And as you can tell, it didn't move a whole lot. That's the basics of uh, 110, 160 counter bears and a one and a half long spring one and a half coil spring and a number four coil spring so hope it helps if you're interested thank you hey guys we hope you enjoyed our footage with chad the critter getter he's got plenty of content coming out he's got lots more to teach us about trapping he's he's as passionate about trapping as we are joe and i are about hunting and fishing so trapping is just another form of hunting so Stay tuned, we got lots more to go. If there's any questions you have for us, let us know in the comments and we will get those questions answered right away. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching guys, Hook Taunt, out.